This protocol describes magnetic labeling of 5 times 10 to the 7th mouse lymphoid cells using Dynabeats FlowComp Mouse CD4. Approximately 30 to 35 percent of mouse spleen cells are T cells, and approximately 70 percent of these T cells highly express the CD4 antigen. You will need your sample, Dynabeats FlowComp Mouse CD4 kit. This kit contains 1 ml of FlowComp Mouse CD4 antibody, 3 ml of FlowComp Dynabeats at a concentration of 10 mg per ml, and two 20 ml bottles of the FlowComp release buffer. A magnet such as the Dynamag 15. Cold isolation buffer. This buffer should be PBS that is calcium and magnesium free, supplemented with 0.1% BSA and 2 millimolar EDTA. A mixer that allows for both tilting and rotation. Optional items are flow cytometry antibodies and reagents. It is very important to use a mixer that provides tilting and rotation of the tubes to ensure that dynabeads do not settle at the bottom of the tube. Carefully follow the recommended pipetting volumes and incubation times. Do not combine this kit with your own biotinylated antibodies. The antibodies supplied in the kit have a special modified biotin that allows for the removal of the dynabeads, leaving you with bead-free cells. This product should not be used with the discontinued Dynal MPC-1 magnet. Avoid air bubbles during pipetting. Never use less than the recommended volume of dynabeads. Prepare a single cell suspension from lymphoid organs such as lymph nodes or spleen. Prepare approximately 10 mL of isolation buffer per 5 times 10 to the 7th cells. Resuspend the beads on the rolling mixer for at least 5 minutes. When working with fewer than 5 times 10 to the 7th cells, use the same volume as indicated in the protocol. When working with higher cell numbers, scale up all reagent volumes and total volumes accordingly. Start by resuspending the 5 times 10 to the 7th cells in 500 microliters of isolation buffer. Add 25 microliters of FlowComp mouse CD4 antibody. Mix well and incubate for 10 minutes in a refrigerator that is between 2 and 8 degrees Celsius. Add 2 mL cold isolation buffer to wash cells followed by centrifugation for 8 minutes at 350 G. After centrifugation, you should see a nice pellet of cells. Remove and discard the supernatant. Add one milliliter cold isolation buffer to the cell pellet and gently resuspend. Add 75 microliters of the resuspended flow comp dynabeads. Mix well. Incubate for 15 minutes in the refrigerator or cold room in the mixer that allows for rolling and tilting. Place the tube in the magnet for one to five minutes. Carefully remove and discard the supernatant. Be careful not to touch the sides of the tube as the beads and cells 
are bound there. Remove the tube from the magnet. Add at least one mil cold isolation buffer and resuspend the bead bound cells by gently pipetting up and down five times. Place the tube in the magnet for a minimum of one minute. Carefully remove and discard the supernatant. Be careful not to touch the sides of the tube and disturb the beads and the cells. Remove the tube from the magnet and carefully resuspend the bead bound cells in one milliliter of the flow comp release buffer. Mix well and incubate for 10 minutes at room temperature using the rolling and tilting mixer. Here's a tip to help you improve yields. If your mixer places a sample down into the cap, you can remove the cap and wash it with a little bit of buffer. Take the buffer back up and add that into your cells. Now you can go on to the magnet step. Mix the cells by gently pipetting five times. And place the tube in the magnet for one to five minutes. Transfer the supernatant containing the bead-freed cells to a new tube. Place the tube in the magnet for one to five minutes to remove all residual beads. Transfer the supernatant containing the bead-free cells to a new tube. Add two mils of the cold isolation buffer, followed by centrifugation for eight minutes at 350 G. Notice the nice pellet? Discard the supernatant and resuspend the cell pellet in your preferred buffer. Store the cells at two to eight degrees Celsius until further use. Now your cells are ready for downstream applications such as flow analysis, cell culture, or adoptive transfer. For further technical advice, please visit www.invitrogen.com slash cell isolation. For flow staining of cells after isolation, it is recommended to use Caltag clone RM4-5 as primary fluorescent antibody.